Attention to detail can really move things to a next level when designing user experiences and interfaces. And that's what we will be attempting to do today with this animated loading bar in Figma. So the final outcome will be a button that will start a loading process. And when that loading process comes to an end, you get a fi visual feedback, you get another animation that will kind of confirm that everything has been successfully loaded. This is the final result and let's take a look at how this is done in Figma. And by the way, if you'd like to download the source file for this, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. Let's start with the text tool and create a button. So I'm pressing T to access the text tool and then I'm going to type uh, start and I'm going to choose a bold font. My favorite, as you can see from all of my videos, is Avenir Next. Uh, so I'm going to use that one and then let's go for heavy with some letter spacing. Next thing we're going to do is select this text object and then press Shift A to add that into an auto layout. Add some padding, add a background here. It's going to be probably a black button with white text and then as usual around the corners and just make it look nice with paddings and, and sizing in general. Right, so this is our button. I'm gonna rename this button or actually we're gonna name this loading bar. You're gonna see why later. And now what we're gonna do is select this once again and press Shift A again to add this into another auto layout. And we're gonna call this loading bar container, right? We're going to remove all paddings and we're going to also add rounded corners so that this is rounded as well as the contents. I'm going to go over here to turn this into a component and then add a variant like this. We're going to select the component as a whole and then go here to adjust the property. This property is going to be called state and we're going to have start then loading start and we're going to just move this over here and increase the size like this. Next thing we're going to do is select the loading start state and then just extend that all the way over here and also add a stroke that's going to be about two pixels let's say and we're going to add some padding four on each side maybe like this and just increase the rounding to make sure that they are even on both sides and we're going to also copy the stroke from here and paste that here, except it's not going to be visible. So we're going to set the color of the stroke to zero, uh, the opacity of the stroke to zero. Next thing here is to actually hide the start copy and then select the loading bar within the loading start variant and just change the size to about 24. All right. So you can kind of start seeing how this is going to be turning into a uh, into a loading bar so and I'm gonna just select that again and just also turn the width to 24 to so basically get a little circle so as you can realize probably by now this is our loading bar starting point and we're gonna now create another variant from this this one is probably gonna be called loading end this loading bar within the loading end variant we're gonna just go over here and change the horizontal resizing to fill container. Now you can see what happens, right? Um, the loading bar, that's the full loading bar. This is what you see when a loading is complete. And that's exactly what we are going for, right? So we have three states. We have the button, we have loading start and loading end. The component and all the states, all the variants are black and white, but we're gonna fix that later. We are, we're gonna add some colors, but for now, just to work with the basic structure, we're gonna keep this black and white for simplicity. All right, so what should happen after the loading is complete? What I'd like to see in this case is something along the lines of a check mark, some animation, some kind of a visual feedback that the loading is complete. And I figured that this could happen by actually, so I created another variant, right? This could happen by this whole object shrinking to about this size and uh, maybe then in, an increase in height, which is gonna set all of these vertical resizing to fill container and therefore this one as well, right? So it would kind of change shape like this. Maybe these paddings would disappear so they would turn to zero. So you would, you would kind of go back to this original button layout type of thing. And don't forget that we still have this text object within within the loading bar auto layout, right? So it's hidden right here. Uh, it's here as well and here as well. We just took it along for the ride and just 
kept it hidden until we need it, which is in this state right here. So I'm gonna just adjust the auto layout alignment to center and center and then turn the visibility on. So ideally what I'd like to see here is some kind of check mark, some kind of text that says it's complete. Right. So we're probably going to have to create a check mark on our own. So I'm going to go to the pen tool and just do this type of thing. Right. Very simple. A check mark. That's all there is to it. I increase the stroke and just make sure the size of this is appropriate for this layout. So that would be about this big. Right. Something like that. That should work. Right. So I'm going to copy this and paste that inside the loading bar auto layout within the fourth state of this component and Probably I'm gonna change the start copy to say something like um, done, right? Then I'm gonna select the loading bar and set horizontal resizing to hack contents. And this is kind of what, what you'll get. And the whole container of this to hack contents as well. I think we could decrease the size of this, to be honest. We could do uh, this, this big. I think we could make the stroke about the same strength as the as the copy, right? So, um, and one thing that I'm gonna do is select the check mark and I'm actually gonna paste that inside this state, which means that when we enable this, the visibility of this, this is kind of what we get. But this one is gonna say done. And then I'm gonna just choose both of these and set their opacity to zero, right? So that it is still there, but it just, Hidden. Now let's add some colors, shall we? This is very flat. I think that for a successful completion, I think that warrants some kind of green color, right? Let's say that if the loading is complete, you would kind of get something like this. Maybe we want to even go for a gradient. Why don't we try that? Let's, let's try experiment with gradient. This would go from here, from here, and it would be Right, so it would go from this green color to this, this one that is slightly more to the cyan side of things, right? Just very, very subtle, something like that, all right? This probably means that we're gonna have to copy this. First of all, I'm gonna just create a black color that we will paste beneath the gradient. Um, then I'm gonna choose this one again, copy and paste that here so we get so both of these objects have the same fill if you go here you can see we have this gradient and a black color and then when you go here you can see we have the same except in this state this gradient is going to be completely invisible so zero right so as the loading is well loading we will get a gradual change of colors from this initial color to this gradient this also means that i'm gonna just select this gradient and paste that here, actually, sorry about that. We're gonna have to choose the loading bar, remember? And then paste that here. This also means that I have to change these two elements from white to black, right? Makes sense, so that it is more visible. Regarding these strokes, I think they could be a bit lighter. I think that we could go for like some kind of transparency with this black color. So why don't we go for like 20% and additionally, additionally, we could create a gradient on top of this. Same one, the one that is shown here. Doesn't that look nice? Let's try that out. So here is what, what you'd get. This loading bar would slowly transition from these colors to these colors right here. I think the gradual transition in color could look really good. Of course, that this means we're gonna have to select the stroke, the linear gradient and paste that here, but make it invisible, right? And then make sure this stroke in this state also the same. So I'm just gonna do this, right? Next, we're gonna rename this state of the component confirmation. And I think at this point, we are ready for some kind of prototyping. So why don't we create a test frame by going to the frame tool and then creating a frame that will be approximately 800 by, I don't know, 500, right? This frame is gonna be called, let, let's just use numbers. So this one's gonna be the first one, the second one, third one, and the fourth one, right? I think we're gonna need four. I'm gonna go to assets and then search for this component that we've created, click and drag it over here, right? And then I'm gonna use center and center constraints and center that against the background and we have our 
initial screen. Next thing, we're gonna copy this and paste that into the second one. But here, we're gonna have the loading start state, right? Same thing here, we're gonna copy that and paste that into the third frame where we're gonna have loading end. And finally, you probably can see this coming, we're gonna have a final screen that will show the confirmation state. However, this is purely static. We don't have anything that will make this move through these states. So what are we gonna do about that? We're gonna go to prototype and then select this button, find this little blue circle light right here and then click and drag it over to the second frame. We're gonna say on click, right? Navigate to two and it's gonna be smart animate. That's very important by the way. Smart animate is out 300 milliseconds. So when we click, it will take us here and it will smart animate, which is critical. The second one, we're gonna choose the whole frame and then go for this circle again and connect that into the third frame. Here, there's not gonna be on click, but there's gonna be after delay. This delay gonna be basically no delay, so just one millisecond. We will navigate to three, However, we're gonna, this is gonna take us, let's say, five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. It's gonna be ease in and out, and also smart animate, still very important. And finally, we're gonna do something similar here, connect that to the fourth one, and say again, after delay, one millisecond, navigate to four, smart animate, ease in and out, or just ease out. And this is gonna be fast again, so 300 milliseconds. And I think we are done with the prototyping. So what should theoretically happen now is when we click this button, it will morph into a loading bar, then it will start loading. And once it finishes loading, it will again morph again into this colorful button or just this colorful element that will say that the loading has been finished. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna select the first frame and go to preview mode. So here's the thing, it works, kind of, but this happens and we don't want this to happen. This looks horrible. We have to fix that. However, the timing and the flow, all of that works properly. You can see that the stroke is changing colors. It kind of has this animation and the morphing works great. We'll just have to fix this rectangle thing and we're good to go. How do we do that? I think what's causing the problems is that this is an actually an auto layout. And what I think, what I suspect Figma would like to see here is just a good old regular rectangle. Let's give that rectangle to Figma. I'm gonna use the rectangle tool and just this size and then copy that inside this loading start auto layout. What happens now is this. We don't want that. We're gonna have to set the position of this rectangle to absolute position. Center that against the container vertically and just change the size to match what's already in there. This rectangle is gonna be called loading bar. So that's our actual loading bar. And it's gonna be rounded like this, while at the same time, old original loading bar, the opacity of this is gonna be zero. It's gonna disappear, right? And now this loading bar is gonna be also black, but also it's gonna have this linear gradient that will be invisible for now. What we need to do now is copy this loading bar into this state right here, right? And then extend that all the way to these edges, enable this linear gradient to be again visible, right? So this looks identical to the previous version. However, we've replaced this inner loading bar auto layout with a loading bar rectangle. Let's see if that fixes the problem. I'm gonna also have to hide this lo old loading bar by setting its opacity to zero, so that the only thing that's within this loading bar is this new rectangle element that we have created. Let's test this out again. Unfortunately, as you can see, this did not fix the problem. It's still there. It's important to remember that situations like this are gonna happen to you all the time. So when you really want to create something that is a bit more complicated, you're basically gonna do just troubleshooting only. So let's try and figure out another workaround. I think Figma somehow has a problem with the changing dimensions of an object. It can't animate the object properly when it's changing sizes. However, what if we used a solution that doesn't contain any object changing their 
dimensions. How could we achieve that? We're gonna probably have to use something called a mask. So a mask is, you can by the way watch a tutorial on masks in Figma on my channel. A mask is actually a, a shape, a layer that will define what parts of a different layer are visible. In this case, we will probably have to duplicate this loading bar, rename this loading bar underscore mask, and then this mask is gonna be as wide as the whole finished loading bar, right? Next thing we're gonna do is do the same to the loading bar. So we have two rectangles, loading bar and loading bar mask. Now, I'm gonna select both of these, right? Both of these rectangles that have absolute position enabled and go here to create a mask, use as mask. This creates a mask group. Then I'm gonna use whichever layer was used as the actual mask. Here you can see that Figma decided to use the one on the top. Um, so I'm gonna move this all the way over here so that it creates this nice little circle. So we have this situation where uh, it actually looks as a rectangle that's rounded and shrunk to this size, but that's actually not the case. There is no shrinking taking place. You have one full width rectangle and another full width rectangle. So the animation that's gonna take place will not be changing dimensions, but changing positions. And that might fix the problem. Now I'm just gonna take this whole thing, the whole mask group and paste that inside the loading end state. Also, I'm gonna hide the loading bar, the initial one, and same thing here, I'm just gonna turn that off. And in this loading end state, I'm gonna take this mask, the lower one, and just move that all the way to here, right? All the way to these edges, right? So you, you can see that this mask has moved and it has revealed the whole rectangle. It has been there all that time. I'm gonna enable the gradient again. And now let's see if this actually helped us solve our problem. I'm gonna relaunch our prototype and test this out. So I'm gonna click start. And it finally works the way we intended. So this fixed our problem. So as you can see, when you are doing stuff like this with Figma and also in other programs, you often have to just completely change your direction and that has been the case here as well. There's one last thing to fix and that is making sure that when you actually click the button, it doesn't just move, it also morphs into the new shape. As you can see, we don't get, we don't get this um, shape changing, which is something I'm gonna fix now. And to fix that, we're gonna have to select the mass group and paste that inside the final state. We're gonna have to align it to the top left corner, change the size of this like this and change the opacity to zero and then enable the loading bar in this second state, which should change the behavior to this. It's hard to notice, but it looks a little bit better. So that's why I decided to revert that change. Anyway, this is the final result. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like if you'd like to see more content like this. And again, if you'd like to download the source file, check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.